a case I just settled, um, I believe, in February of this year. Um, originally, this was a young gentleman married in his early 30s with uh, two young children. He was in an auto accident. He hired attorney number one. He wasn't happy with attorney number one. Um, all of his medical bills were not being paid. So he fired attorney number one. I got the case about a year into it. Um, and this gentleman had four back surgeries, failed back surgeries, and uh, was unable to return to work. Uh, they originally offered $100,000 to him. Uh, we worked the case up all the way up to trial. They then asked us for a mediation and we were able to settle the case for $750,000. As a result of that, he was able to pay off his mortgage, pay off all his debts, and now we're currently trying to get him Social Security disability. So he was pretty happy because now at least he has somewhat of a secure future. When I was in high school, I really enjoyed to argue. Um, so I debated all through high school. I spent one summer at Georgetown University at a debate institute, another summer at Northwestern at a debate institute, and then I went to college at Bowling Green State University on a debate scholarship. So I've been arguing since I've been uh, 12 or 13 years old, and I've always wanted to be an attorney. I like personal injury law representing the plaintiff because usually the plaintiff is the underdog and it's usually the individual against the corporation and they're the people that need more individual attention. The big problem is, is the insurance companies have done a tremendous job of brainwashing um, the average voter that the reason uh, we have the high insurance rates is because of the frivolous lawsuits. Um, the reason doctors are allegedly leaving the state is because of uh, the frivolous lawsuits. And in reality, the reason is is the insurance companies have raised the rates for the premiums for the doctor, regardless of the, uh, of the results of the uh, malpractice cases. Insurance companies, manufacturers look at the bottom line. There's a few manufacturers that look in the long-term interest that it's better public relations and it makes more common sense to produce a safe and a quality product. But the only way to hold those people accountable for that and to force them to uh, have the safe products is by having the trial lawyers as pretty much the gatekeeper to force them to have consequences for their wrongful acts. What I try to do is um, address head-on the stereotypes. So what I'll do is how many people, I'll ask, I asked a question three weeks ago in a jury trial, how many people here think that uh, my client is looking for something for nothing and that I'm just a greedy trial lawyer? And then what I try to do is after they raise their hand, and oftentimes there are, we have a dialogue about it and we talk about it. And then we talk about if somebody is legitimately injured, do these jurors think that they're allowed to pursue a case? And what I try to do is just get them to open up and tell the truth and discuss, discuss it with them. The only way to make sure that products are safe in our country, the only way to protect people from drunk drivers or wrongdoers is there has to be a penalty and people have to pay full and just compensation. The civil justice system for me, I hope would mean that people are going to get a fair shot in court that people are going to be able to get fair and just compensation and that people are going to be willing to listen with an open mind. My name is Chuck Blake. I'm an attorney from Toledo, Ohio. We do a large amount of auto accident work, wrongful death work, medical malpractice, products liability, construction accidents, uh, workers' compensation, any type of plaintiff personal injury cases.